Welcome, Eagles, to another episode of Trad Cat Night Radio. I am Eric Ajewski, founder and owner of Trad Cat Night, the most viewed and followed traditional Catholic website worldwide. This is home to the New Crusade. This is also the number one ranked website by Alexa in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I'm going to specifically be talking about uh, a pseudo-traditionalist, pseudo-theologian, John Salza. People have been asking what's been going on with this latest escapade. For those who are new to Trad Cat Night, trying to get their head around what's been going on, I'll just basically walk you through it uh, from my angle, my perspective. I recently refuted <laughs> John Saul's very rigorous uh, arguments uh, against this apostolate that we have adopted Protestant era in Protestant fashion himself, taking uh, you know some type of teaching and then put. Uh, a, a, a Salzonian spin on it, if you will. And I'll get into some things for you to, to ponder and think about. Um, before we do that, let's first pray to Our Lady so that we can obtain those graces for our own souls, for our own families, and specifically tonight, let's pray for these poor pseudo trads who are very spiritually blind. You know, it, it's very serious. Compromise is very, very serious. And Archbishop Lefebvre taught to keep away from these people. He told you to stay from the Bishop Fillets. He told you to stay away from the FSSP. He told you to stay away from the John Venerys. He told you to stay away from the John Salzos. Read The Impossible Reconciliation by Father Riolt, and you'll see this is very clear. He, he taught that these men were poisoned. I don't need to, to be ecclesiastical authority to say that. If St. Athanasius in his time said, they have the buildings, we have the faith, we believe Archbishop Lefebvre is that St. Athanasius, fundamentally speaking. I would throw Father, Hex, Father Hess into the mix. But if that's what you truly believe in, then this is the website for you. If you really want to follow what Archbishop Lefebvre taught, which is so often spun out of context by certain seeds, certainly by these pseudo-trad frauds such as John Salza, um, this is where you need to be. The Father Hesses. I'd even put Father Kramer in there, who represents the old guard as well, I would say. So we, we pray for them to awaken. We pray for them to lay down the self-love. We pray for them to put down their narcissism, which very much encapsulates John Salza and his big head. Time's running short, folks. We're in the last hour. We can't put economics ahead of the faith as these pseudo-trad groups do, which I have been just so... Astonished to hear certain things from priests who have even been close to some of these uh, individuals. And it's everything that I have truly suspected, folks. I mean, that's just the reality, and that's very dangerous. Because as you know, I could care less about money. We'll get into this in a little bit, but let's, let's pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So for the next hour or so, I predominantly want to focus in on our buddy, little boy Salza, uh, who's out, out and about running his mouth. And I warned these pseudo-trads, I, I warned all of them, whether it's the Vereccios, I don't care who they are, the Salzas, if they're, if they're going to mention the resistance and try to make it seem as though we're in the wrong simply by trying to maintain what Lefebvre taught, if my name is mentioned, then it's good night. The gloves are off. And as I mentioned uh, within this past week, the pseudo-trad groups are in decline, ladies and gentlemen. That means people are leaving their pages. They're no longer really interested in what they have to say. And as it relates to John Salza, no one really cared about what he had to say to begin with. I just checked his page again. Two pages. Uh, JohnSalza.com is like 1.6 or 1.7 million in the world. And, and True or False Pope is like 3.5 million. I mean, that's not even pathetic, folks. That means no one's reading their material. So I don't know where he gets off thinking, as the narcissistic, narcissistic noob that he is, that he is some, somehow, you know, the new St. Thomas Aquinas of, his, <laughs> of our times. Because he's far from that. When I have discussions with individuals from the old guard, as I've had with priests, his name is not mentioned. In fact, when I mention his name to certain priests, and it's not even Father Kramer, just others of the old guard, if you will, some independent, they just laugh when they hear Saul's name. They really don't even have to go <laughs> and say anything more than that chuckle because I already know 
knowing with my uh, dealings uh, with Mr. Salza. Before we get into anything further, I wanted to make a note to all of you. For those of you who want to follow on Facebook, I highly encourage you do. Uh, that's going to be the predominant social media outlet, which I will be interacting with, getting people involved with. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm stepping aside from my adult ministry. I basically, for the past six months, I've been trying to warn young girls, you know, the immodest dressers, those who are not living appropriately, you know, to get their act together in the very least. And I, I've got, you know, a couple handfuls of girls that are, are going to stick with us long term. But, you know, I've got a lot of people that I'm going to remove. And then I'm going to replace that with traditionalist people who might be interested uh, in our material. So please do search Eric Kajewski. Look for the double-headed eagle. And simply uh, send a friend request. Maybe private message me and I'll add you to the group. Uh, you know, as we get closer, everyone should see this. Unfortunately, the pseudo trads like Salsa don't see this because they are so fundamentalist in their position. We're going to be moving away from buildings, if you will, even more so than where we are right now. And ultimately, we're going to have to preserve the faith in the home. And that's exactly what Jesus taught or told to Marie, Marie Julie Jehenny. The home is the refuge of my peoples during these times. So obviously we're going to be, that's the trend we're moving in. Bishop Flay is moving in the direction of modernist Rome under the guise of prudence. If you can figure that out, if you can try to explain that, then you belong in that category. We'll continue to tell people to stay away from you. You're compromising the faith. And that certainly, uh, definitely involves John Salza, one of the lead cheerleaders, if you will, for... Bishop Filet, as I've taught you for the past few years, we've pointed this out in blogs. We've showed the double-mindedness. We've showed Bishop Filet's lies. We've shown how they just basically want to get rid of those who want to maintain Archbishop Lefebvre's position. Fine. Fine and dandy. We want anything to do more with you and your compromise. That's all great. But don't get mad at me when I call him a snake because that's not going to stop. He's a snake in the grass, and so is Salsa. Money-motivated money people are never going to succeed in the end. And I'll share with you the personal story with Salza here in a little bit. Uh, so I wanted to mention that change in uh, Facebook structure, if you will. Um, so to lay out the groundwork for this talk, I just want to remind everyone that we it's this is a dogfight. This is a fight for the faith. And even as Pope St. Pius X, we shouldn't be mas massaging these modernists with, with, uh, you know, with hands and, and, and trying to be all lovey-dovey to them. You know, after we concretely show and demonstrate to these people in Vatican II that they're not following the faith, it comes to fists. Now, I want to preface this talk by saying this, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, we were all there. I was at one point in the Novus Ordo, but I didn't know better. There are people searching right now. All I'm trying to demonstrate to you in part, is why you can't be associated with these individuals, why you shouldn't be going to these conferences, why you shouldn't be spending your money on Saul's toilet paper book, why you shouldn't be going to the Bishop Filet, uh, you know, conferences and teachings. you got to keep yourself distant from these people who want to shake hands with the enemies of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ. These people aren't keeping the faith. It's a fundamental question. Are these people who are following Vatican II keeping the faith? No. So then why are they making it seem like this is a good thing, as, as Bishop Filet recently came out and said, that, for, well, Francis calls us Catholic. I mean, that shows you the mindset. It shows you the mind rot. And by the way, I'll add to this as an addendum. On uh, Facebook, Cisco ran away from me. After I asked him several questions, that was one of them, no reply back from him. He just ran away like the spineless wimp that he is. That's what they do. Because they can't answer certain questions. That's how these pseudo-trads are. Um, so, the groundwork. The need to fight for the faith. Do you think that I've come to send peace upon the earth? No, I've come to separate by the sword. Read my blog, August 17th, on religion divides. It's not just a question of heresy at this point. It's a question of compromise. Can we go along with these individuals who, in the very least want to embrace the council as Catholic? The answer, no. Why? If the groundwork is that Archbishop Lefebvre and Father Hess 
are the St. Athanasius of our time, and they truly did point this out. Which, by the way, as a side note, when I was re-going through Vatican II uh, with my background, knowing Freemasonry, knowing what they teach, and knowing the New Age plan to this progression, if you will, towards this false prophet and the formalized one world religion, it became very clear to me, even before I knew who Father Hess was, even before I knew who Father Kramer was, even before who, you know I knew who Bishop Williamson was or Archbishop Lefebvre. That was where I came to. I was like, there's, there's no way that you can accept this. And yet they do. Bishop Fillet right now accepts the council. I don't know what people don't understand about that. Push aside, he says, there's novelties and there's stuff we have to discuss. Baloney, baloney, baloney. They accept the council. It's done and over with. On that basis alone, you shouldn't be in their churches, period. Compromise. And for those of you who think that's such an estranged opinion, I had to remind our little friend, Mr. Salza, in my early refutation of him, in which I left his name out, it was about six months ago, I had to remind him of the example of St. Athanasius, and he had no response. We'll get into that in a little bit. But the bottom line is, you know, he quotes canon law, and anyone could do that, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, I got seven years of business school. I, ne I nearly went on to get my own doctorates. I know a lot of lawyers, uh, and he's he's a prototypical lawyer, very rigorous, very fundamentalist. He does he takes a canon or a dogmatic teaching and doesn't properly apply it as the church has applied it within the mind of the church. He gives it his own Salzonian spins and says, "Hey." You're Protestant if you don't accept what I say about that. And yet you'll look at church precedents and you won't find anything to substantiate that. And I'll get into the whole St. Anthony's example being one of them in a little bit. So groundwork, if you believe what Archbishop Lefebvre and Father has taught was correct, that's the path I need to go. Then this is where you need to be. It certainly isn't the remnant playing games over there saying that we can, you know, it's the, it's the liberal media spinning Vatican II out of context. Certainly isn't 1 Peter 5. Another pseudo-traditionalist site. Certainly isn't. And sadly, it is is John Venary too. Keep him in prayer, by the way, with his recent diagnosis of cancer. But I ha I've had my problems with him on Facebook. I had to block him. I mean, they just don't get it. They're not following Archbishop Lefebvre. We have the quotes to prove it. Money, 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 folks. I don't want to stand accused of having to, to first pursue money rather than the faith itself. So, again, this comes from personal experience, as many of you know, dealing with these pseudo-trad types, the constant removal of our comments, the constant trying to demonize us as... <laughs> As our uh, little friend uh, Salza tried to do with uh, Father Kramer here uh, recently. So here's the backdrop. And again, you know, Salza is a classic pseudo tread spin doctor, if you will. But here's kind of the backdrop. It was about a week, or, a week or so ago. Well, let's go back even before then. As many of you know, at Tradcat Night, I tried to inv invite all types of people onto the radio show. It's not just people of our mindset, you know, the Father Kramers or the Father Hesses. I have extended far out into pseudo trad land in charity to try to find some commonality to where we could have, a, you know, a decent conversation. And so with Saul's, it was the backdrop of state of, state of occultism, but the problem was some of his arguments were, were literally arguments that Archbishop Lefebvre had refuted. And so I wouldn't post it the second... Uh, I had two talks with him. The second one, I refused to talk to him, refused to, uh, excuse me, post it, of which I got about three subsequent emails from him begging. And I, when I say the word beg, I really do use the word, <laughs> word beg. I mean, it was really pathetic. I mean, spineless is, is, isn't even the word. Please put this up, Eric. Pray to the Holy Ghost, Eric. The devil's trying to get at you, Eric. I mean, it was pathetic. I mean, it was like an ex-girlfriend trying to get back together with you. Completely spineless. And uh, so, you know, the bottom line with Saul's is this. You know, and I've dealt with these pseudo-trads enough. You're really not going to make much ground with them but by trying to engage with email debate with them. Much like uh, State of a Contest fundamentalist. You know, the, di the diamond 
brother types. There are certain sensible state of accounts I, I can talk to, but with some of these pseudo chat fun fundamentals, it just becomes, you're just not going to make any segue really. I mean, it's just going to go back and forth for the whole day. And if he has time for that, great. I don't have time for that. I certainly don't. Maybe with his ailing website, he does need that kind of exposure, but we don't here at Tradcat Night. Um, so, basically, uh, it was pointed out to me about a week ago uh, by some individuals that they felt that uh, John Salza was, was mentioning us in, in an initial, I guess, uh, quote-unquote refutation of, of Father Kramer. And so I went there and, and, you know, I took a look and, let me just put it to you this way. If you're finally getting someone's information about 10 days later, that means no one's following you, folks. <laughs> that means no one really cares what you have to say. And so, I mean, it wasn't only until 10 days later. I mean, I encourage you all to stay away from this website, but for the sake of the argument, we'll, we'll take a look at his website here in a second. But it was pointed out, you know, he made mention of a, a, a disciple of Father Kramer who has adopted the Protestant era of, uh, you know, claiming that the, the church... Uh, was small, which I easily refuted, by the way, using quotes. You can all check that out. It was a couple weeks ago. I think it was called, um, well, just search Tradcat Night. The church is small on Google, and it should pop up. But using quotes from the fathers themselves, using quotes from Pope Benedict XVI, who read The Real Third Secret. Now, what's interesting about this, so you all know, is I had side conversations with John Salza. The first one probably... We probably talked for about an hour, hour and a half off of uh, the air. And first and foremost, the, the thing that struck out to me was as a, as a former Freemason, a, a pretty high-ranking one, he was completely clueless as to the New World Order agenda. You know, I basically felt like I was a little child trying to teach him everything that they were about to do. Um, and, it's, and it's important because it helps you lay down the groundwork for what we've been saying here all along at Tradcat Night. The Vatican II indeed was that bridge over into the New Age. And all of this is going to transpire, in my opinion, very soon. But nevertheless, you know, in my talks with him, I can tell you that, how should I say this and be nice and charitable, that he was a narcissistic noob, that he <laughs> thought that he knew it all. Uh, he even at one point during our email exchange uh, I took a quote from like Archbishop Lefebvre and then he said, you know, you can't argue in this fashion. You can only argue it in this way very much, you know, in lawyerish, uh, fashion. And I caught him off guard with a lot of, with several, uh, Archbishop Lefebvre quotes. And that's what happens when you throw it at these pseudo trads. They, they have to run tracks now because they know the new position is to structure themselves back under modernist Rome. And now they have to scramble. They have to try to use, uh, different angles to try to refute you without making it seem like you're putting down Archbishop Lefebvre. That, that's the that's the easiest way uh, that I can say it. And so, uh, you know, my dealings with him uh, off the air, you know, as I mentioned, I, I try to be nice with individuals. I mentioned that to him. I said, hey, listen, this, this, we, we firmly believe that what Archbishop Lefebvre is truth. What you're saying contradicts some of the things that Lefebvre have taught, even on the visit, the whole visibility of the, the, the church argument, which Lefebvre refuted, we refuted people like John Salza very easily. You can see that in, in uh, the article that I demonstrated a few weeks back. And the bottom line is, listen, I don't want anything to do with these individuals anymore. I tried to be nice to all of them, but it just comes to a point where the Eagles Towns is going to have to come out. And that's how it is. We have to keep separate from these compromisers. Now, if we take a quick look, uh, you know, at his <laughs> at his website, because uh, you know, I was trying to pan through some of his comical work here. Uh, you know, we, we we first have to understand these pseudo trads. What they think, they think what they're teaching is not poison. So you have to come from it from that angle. And yet, Arch, what Archbishop Lefebvre said totally contradicts what they say. Same thing with Father Hess. As a matter of fact, I, I came to find out and, uh, you know, a little bit after, if you will, 
that was no surprise to me that Father Hess, towards the end before his death, was having a lot of problems with the pseudo trads in the neo society already, one of which apparently was Salza. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay, so the Father Hesses of the world, eh, they would have told you to stay away from John Salza. <laughs> now, going to his website just here, uh, you know, really briefly, because I'm trying to tie this in, ladies and gentlemen, with, you know, at the end, towards the end of our conversation, he just, he seemed very itching and desperate to not only get endorsements for his book, but then also just get it out there, like, re like really quickly. And uh, he mentioned to me, and I really thought he was joking around, but, you know, never underestimate the mind of a pseudo tread. He actually asked me if Scott Hahn would endorse his book. I'm going to give you three seconds so you, you can chew on that for a second. John Salza, the new St. Thomas Aquinas for the church, asking Scott Hahn for an endorsement from his book for his book. All right, you can snap out of it now. That's a true story, ladies and gentlemen. I seriously was waiting for him to ask me for Bergoglio's number so that he can get an endorsement from Francis himself. Something to think about, folks. It truly is. Now, his endorsements, run down his endorsements on, on his website. Bishop Flay, do I need to go any further with that? Snake in the grass, trying to spin doctor everything and trying to make it seem like the resistance... Uh, is not following Archbishop Lefebvre that we're uncharitable, trying to demonize us. And again, I, listen, listen, folks, I sat in a Neo-SSPX chapel for several years. A lot of good people, don't get me wrong, listen, generally ignorant people. I don't. They were people who, some of which I, I don't think fully understood everything, which is fine. We're all at a certain point, right? The problem is a lot of, a lot of, talking about the you know about the resistance in fact documented stories of people denied communion uh, old, you know elderly people kicked out stories you know over there in asia where they pinned um notes to the door saying if you know if you're a resistance priest or person who supports the resistance you're not allowed in this chapel i mean really cultish uh behavior re really sad behavior uh, and that's where at a certain point when I was in there, I was like, man, these, these people just don't get it. Bishop Filet don't get it. The John Salzas don't really get it. Certainly Robert Sisko doesn't get it. All of these people who are out in pseudo tread land on their whole internet network, they don't get it, folks. That's what I don't get about people who don't get it. Again, that's because a lot of these people never really heard the true teachings of Archbishop Lefebvre and Father Hess. So make sure you spend time today on my website. Look at all the resources we have for Archbishop Lefebvre. Look at all the resources we have for Father Hess on YouTube. And sit and listen to their videos and ask yourself, do, does what he say jives with what John Salsa says? No. No, not at all. So anyway, the endorsements. Bishop Filet, Brother Bugnolio, who I think at one point eventually just, uh, I think he blocked me at a certain point on Twitter. Big deal. Uh, another pseudo trad. Uh, Father L Leroy uh, in Winona, uh, Chris Ferrara, another pseudo trad. Father Brian Harrison, come on, really? John Fenary, sadly, another pseudo trad who I had problems with on Facebook. Who, when I tried to go into one of the groups that he maintained, where he was trying to get all the pseudo trads together, getting them all giddy, getting them all riled up, right? F no difference between SSPX and FSSP or the ICK. We're all just gonna come together, pseudo trad ecumenism, boy. Well, what's the benefit of that? Ask yourself. What's the benefit of that? Well, if you've got more pool of people, cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. More conferences, more books. Poor Archbishop Lefebvre. That's not how he rolled. Truth. That's a, that is a sobering truth, ladies and gentlemen. And again, I've, I've had you know my suspicions verified by people who are close to... to these certain pseudo trad individuals and again one of the first things that came, <laughs> came out of Saul's mouth this is no lie wow you got a lot of viewers there Eric you must be making a lot of money <laughs> I mean this is how these people think you know cha-ching 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 
Do yourself a favor and don't buy this book. Um, again, there's a whole other list of just known pseudo trads that we would not at all in the least bit call credible or well respected. Tim Staples, even from Catholic Answers. I mean, come on, really? No, that's really an endorsement for his book. Why in the world would you even put that on your website? I'm embarrassed for that John Saul to even put that on his website. I mean, talk about a stretch. <laughs> now, if you go over to his links, hey, no different here. Take a look at them. Harvesting the Fruits, Traditional Catholic Priest, Mundabar, 1 Peter 5, Rorarte Cielli, Remnant, Epinemus Flower, come on. These are all sites Archbishop of Fev, Father has said, uh-uh, stay away from poison. You're endangering your soul. Where, where is, where is pseudo theologian Salza stand? Certainly not with Archbishop of Fev. Take a look at his website. You look at it. Now, one thing I did want to point out. Um, you know, as we're kind of moving along here, again, I'm, I'm doing my best to help people understand from a, a, a personal, uh, perspective, because this is not hearsay. I mean, this was my own, uh, dealings, if you will. I, you know, listen, I was an, an anonymously dragged into this situation by apparently, I guess father Kramer must've made a post. And for those of you who know, you know, up until maybe like the last week or two, I, I don't necessarily have a whole lot of contact with Father Kramer to begin with. Uh, he was a previous spiritual director of mine. I mean, we, we do from time to time stay in contact, but up until this past week or two, really hadn't talked a whole lot with him. I've been extremely busy, and so has, so has he. So, um, you know, I was dragged into this to the situation, uh, and again, when, when my name gets eventually linked with uh, either some sort of compromise uh, statement that we're compromisers or you know I have adopted some Protestant error then hey you know the gloves are off um, so again as I mentioned he's, he's a mastermind and in typical lawyer fashion and you have to remember listen folks you know Judas John Salza very much like the devil can twist words anyone can research canon but can you support that from what's found in church history? Can you properly apply it? Or do you apply it and then have nothing to stand upon? You know, one classic example, and I'll give you an example of that. And again, when I did my St. Athanasius refutation of him, and I did it more anonymously, obviously now I really don't care. The gloves are off. He's just going to have to deal with it now. Um, I, you know, I refuted him, and he, he had nothing to come back with that, with the whole uh, argument that you cannot separate yourself from your bishop now we know as even one of the ten commandments thou shall not kill do we take that in rigorous fundamentalist uh as a rigorous fundamentalist position and say that that never can happen how does the church apply that how has that been developed can we kill an animal to eat yes could you potentially kill someone who's coming to your house and is looking to rape and kill you and your wife? Yeah, you can. Pseudo traditionalist fundamentalists like like Salza will take something like that, and they'll stick with it in a very rigorous position. Do you understand how that now carries over into what we're trying to say? Because I very easily refuted him on this whole notion of his argument of the Fourth Council of Constantinople, where it is said, you know, you can't separate yourself from your bishop. If Saint Athanasius was correct. We know him to be correct, right? He's a doctor and a father of the church. What did he say? They have the buildings. We have the faith. Who's they? Those were people purportedly to be Catholic. Just as John Sauls is trying to point out right now. Are these people Catholic who are following Vatican II objectively speaking? No. So then how can he say in fundamentalist fashion that essentially we're state of a contest? You want to you wanna know why? <laughs> you want to know how? Bishop Filet and his mind rot gets to him saying, well, you're just a practical state of a contest. He gets it from Saul's ology. He gets it from his esteemed theologians 
Cisco and Salsa. And ladies and gentlemen, if those are your theologians that you're flying by, you're in big trouble. You're in big, big trouble. And yet, that's what they go by. So we can very easily look back into history of the church and easily refute that nonsense. No one in the resistance that I know of, or just resistant minded, if you want, however you want to say it, denies the local authority. My local bishop has the authority. He has separated himself from the faith. Therefore, I can't be there. That is Catholic teaching. The church proves the example of St. Athanasius to be right. He was never condemned. He never had jurisdiction over the whole church as a private judgment. Right? That's what he's flying. Private judgment. You can't let your private judgment. Folks, I'm telling you, this guy's lost his mind. He's, he's a typical lawyer. He doesn't apply canons and dogmatic teachings to the mind of the church. And he certainly doesn't have examples to prove what he says, at least from us in the resistance, that we're wrong. And he certainly doesn't follow Archbishop Lefebvre. So sit and, and think about that for a second. St. Athanasius didn't have authority over the whole church, no jurisdiction. He said they had the buildings, we have the faith. The early church fathers gave testimony to that reality and basically patted on his back. And, and then they also patted those on the back who wouldn't go into churches, who, who weren't just heretical folks, that were impious and were compromised. People stayed out of those buildings. That's what I'm talking about. There's precedence for what I have to say as to why you need to stay away from the salsas and the fillets of the world. It's not because he's a narcissist on the, on the level that he's a narcissistic noob and his, his head is simultaneously both up Filet's rear end and his own rear end. It's because of that compromise. And again, this is all under the premise that you believe what Archbishop Lefebvre uh, indeed taught uh, was crazy. Now, apparently... Um, apparently, uh, recently, I guess it was just recently that uh father kramer was uh, you know his his mental status was under question and this i this is listen this is a pseudo trad tactic that if you're in one of these buildings this is what they're going to teach you i was there i witnessed it i saw it it still goes on today from the emails that i get they tried to demonize people in the resistance I specifically talked with Michael Sestak, who was me who's making comments publicly about resistant-minded people and Bishop Williamson uh, directly, and I got on the phone with him for 10 minutes. He hung up because he couldn't answer basic questions, factual information concerning the case of why there was a need to resist. And you know what his argument was? The same as Saul's. Is. He's crazy. He's insane. He's lost it. The once respected Father Paul Kramer. Well, buddy, when were you ever respected? When I ask people of a prominent theologian, I've had more people say Father Kramer than you. As a matter of fact, I've never heard one person tell, tell me that they thought you were some sort of well-respected theologian. Again, you know, come down off cloud nine. Well respected, relevant. I checked his page today. Three point six million, one point four million. Nobody cares what Salza has to say. And again, if you want to know my honest opinion, the reality is I I think because his book hasn't caught on really, it's it's like these little fights are starting, and he's just trying to really feed into it to try to get as, as much attention as he can because I, I know, at least from the people of resistant minded, and again, I'm not state of a contest, but I surely know the state of a contest would agree with us that the book is just is rubbish. And again, listen, any one of us can, can put down quotes on a book. I mean, listen, any, anyone with an advanced degree has high research skills. I mean, you have to take a lot of time out and do that kind of stuff. So anyone can do that, but not everyone can properly apply it. And that's what separates people from the Father Hesses and the Father Kramers of the world from the pseudo-theologians 
Cisco and Salsa. I mean, at one point, I think in one of the articles, they had mentioned uh, something uh, of, of Father Kramer not even being a th theologian or something like that. Father Kramer is a formal theologian of the church. Uh, he's actually had his uh, work studied by uh, Rome, and he's made mention of this more than one time, and found to be without error. Who is who is <laughs> who is pseudo trad fundamentalist Salza to say he's not a theologian? He's nobody. He's not even a theologian himself. He's some lawyer crank trying to starving for attention, who's economically motivated. Eric, how much money do you make? You must make a lot of money. This guy's a joke. Unbelievable, folks, how many people uh, fall for this nonsense. And again, it's across the board with these pseudo-trads. It's really, um, you know, it's, it's really nothing new. I've had to deal with them for years now. Just remember, folks, you know, Judas was one of the twelve, and he compromised our Lord. Compromise is very, it's very important for us to understand. It's not just if someone's teaching heresy. Because there's even some of the resistance who would say, well, Eric's going overboard with that statement. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Compromise is very much a mortal sin, objectively speaking. Um... You know, again, and I also wanted to make another point. Again, these aren't scripted shows, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to sit here in front of a teleprompter. This is all coming, you know, from my heart. And and I try, again, I tried to be nice even with Salza, but at a certain point it just becomes obvious that we're going to have to continue to speak out, keep our distance from these poisoned individuals. I wanted to make a mention of this. I haven't yet. I'm going to have Father Kramer on next week. And so I know today it's more of my, my personal dealings uh, with Salza and pseudo trads in general but we'll get more to the doctrine and i know father kramer will have uh, other information for us as well look for that one maybe the 26th or the 27th here on trad cat night but he's going to be joining me to defend what he really said because again and that's what you know that's what he does he takes what someone says totally blows it out of proportion and tries to paint someone you know you know as someone protestant or someone who's compromised First of all, Mr. Salza should have been paying attention to him when I was relaying my thesis on what I feel is going to happen. And I did that on the phone. And nowhere did I say there would be no hierarchy or no structure or this or that. And yet I got through under the bus and put into that uh, category, if you will. That's Salza for you. I mean, I, seriously, I hope he does a better job at lawyering than he is as a theologian. Because he's certainly not honest. He's certainly not an honest person, just like Bishop Filet isn't. So I have Father Kramer on next week. I'll also make mention, too, you know, you're going to notice what a lot of these pseudo-trad sites, and they, they can't stand me, and that's just fine. Um, you know, a lot of them are leery of mentioning my name. I, I will say it's for two reasons, not afraid to say this at all. First and foremost, they're spineless. Uh, I don't know why there was kind of like this stigma or something from some people, traditionalists, uh, and I'm not even speaking about priests, but just kind of people in general. Oh, well, you know, don't don't say nothing about John or this or that. I mean, no one's scared of John Saul's. Who in their right mind is scared of this little fool? Unbelievable. No. No one is scared of John Saul's. Uh, certainly not me. Certainly not anyone that I know of. Uh, you know... Spineless, continued, uh, uh, you know, attacks, attacks which aren't warranted, putting words in my mouth which aren't true, but secondarily, they know, they all know, that, listen to the, you know, they all know this, they know once they mention me and this website, a good number of their followers are gone. They'll never go back to Salza again. I guarantee you. And the numbers only say that. When we got attacked by Nova Sword Watch, when we got attacked by the Diamond Brothers, what did they all say? Eric's done. Trad Cat Knight's done. Where are we now? We're now approaching the 25,000 mark rank in websites. And all these other websites, what have they done? They've all dropped off. I stand behind our Lord. 
I want to do what our Lord has me to do. The Lord can take this wherever he wants. If you're going to attack this apostolate, you're going to have to deal with him directly. Good luck, good luck with you on that. When our Lord says to lay it down and it's done and it's over, then I know to move on. It certainly isn't going to come from any of these pseudo trads or state of accomptis saying, you're done. Because <laughs> you're going to have to bite your own words now. Um, again, let us get back to uh, the task at hand here, folks. So I also wanted to make mention of one of his quote-unquote uh, witnesses, Robert Sullivan, that he's been using. And again, when I get Father Kramer on, he, he can explain everything that he has said unsalsified and not blown out of proportion. But this particular individual was someone who's just all over the place in terms of theology. How can you say that, Eric? I talked to him on the phone. I've talked to Robert Sullivan, his guest witness, on trueorfalsepope.com. And this guy, he's just gone. And even he admits he's an agitator. After three times specifically telling him not to purport uh, something on my page, he still did it. <laughs> he still was being an antagonizer. And then admitted he was an antagonizer. Now he likes to stir the pot. There's your witness for you. There's, there's your person of example, Robert Sullivan. He's going to have to do better than that, Salza. Once a Mason, always a Mason. Someone saw that post that I did today because Salza was sure as heck taking a beating on social, social media today um, from Father Kramer's page. Um, you know, Father Kramer went out and said today, for those who didn't, uh, see it, you know, basically Salza's a, a, a bold-faced liar. He's published militia and, and deliberate lies against him in retaliation for exposing him as a fraud and a charlatan who inverts Catholic doctrine, as I told you, will take something, completely invert it like a Protestant, and make error appear to be as Catholic teaching and Catholic teaching to appear as heresy. And furthermore, with the Gruner situation, Father Kramer states, Gruner died of natural causes, and, and if anyone really did kill him, it would most likely be of Salza's Brethren of the Lodge, who would think to be the most logical prime suspects. God holds the keys to death in his hands, and he who takes the soul into his hands when one dies... So if these pseudo trads want to keep trying to do this tap dance all day, they're not getting anywhere even over the past week. They haven't gotten anywhere in terms of creating more of a following for themselves. Father Kramer is going to continue to expose Salza. Again, I can speak from personal experience that when people start making comments like that, start want modernist endorsements, want to, you know, want to know how much money I'm making, start throwing up red flags folks having this sense of urgency of getting the book out that's pseudo trad land for you Clyder Guzman says the Freemasons have infiltrated the Vatican for a very long time how dare he still defend the popes of Vatican II now you can make a loose uh, implication there of course of trying to fit yourself back into uh, that structure one does not work with the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ. As Archbishop Lefebvre said, Archbishop Lefebvre said, we cannot accept the council, period. What has Bishop Filet done? He says we can accept the council. There's novelty in it, but we can still accept it. Guess what? That's unacceptable to you, Catholic. Therefore, you must stay clear of Bishop Filet, or any, any priest who's teaching that, for that matter. You can't, you can't buy into that garbage. Two, he called what Bishop Filet and what John Sauls are trying to do. Operation Suicide. It's a loon bin operation to go in and think you are going to convert people who are modernists, who are not keeping the faith, but specifically who have come out and said, yes, 
Once we get you under our wings, guess what? We're going to conciliarize you. Do any one of you who stop the person on the side of the road who looks like they may need uh, a ride, it, it appears like they're going on for a long ride and they're hitchhiking. And you roll down the window and say, are you looking for a ride, sir? And, he, and the person turns to you and says, why, yes, I am. I am looking for a ride, and I'm glad that you're being charitable. And he pulls out a gun and says, listen, I'm going to get in this car with you, and about two miles down the road, I'm going to shoot you in the side of the head, all on the basis of your charity. This is what the society is doing. To people who are openly saying, I'm going to shoot you in the side of the head. We're going to modernize you. We're going to conciliarize you. And we're the bad guys? Salza and his ilk think we're the bad guys? Ladies and gentlemen, time for you to sit down and ponder that one and think about that. If you think that is prudent, go with them. You're poisoned just like Salza. You're poisoned just like Filet and the rest. Go with them. Go with them in your feel-good, self-lovish, I need to be recognized by people who have killed the faith, who are destroying the faith, objectively speaking, who have no intentions of coming back to the faith, and see how that flies with our Lord. Nathan Whitmer writes, Why does Salza do this? What's in it for him? Jacob Tal- Talgut responds, Money, 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 money. Kramer proves Salza's book to be an error and heretical. Obviously, he struck a nerve. Press on, Father Kramer. And so you can uh, get those entrenched uh, in ignorance, out of ignorance. Sabrina Calderon writes, Don't bother with this toot. Not worth the time, she says. Raleigh Cambody. Maybe he just wants to be more popular. Well, you nailed it. <laughs> People who are irrelevant, trying to become relevant. Only in the world of Salsa land. Adele Smith called you insane. Actually, the, I believe the, the way he put it was he's gone mad or something. And again, this is the same old tactic. What I was getting at earlier is I actually had a, a, a conversation uh, with Saystack who eventually left the conversation and, and, and used that same argument. I think they actually teach that probably, you know, after mass and coffee and donuts time. You know, what's the different ways we can make it seem like the resistance you know, are, are crazy. You know, we all have our differences, he says, but we never take, uh, you know, at each other's throats like dogs across the line. They act like brother masons working for their master, the devil. And I just simply wanted to add to everyone, you can uh, look at this phone conversation that I had with Michael Sestak on the blog that I did today. But, you know, the only ones insane here, folks, aren't us. We're not the ones who are who are sitting there you know, with a smile on our faces, pointing the figure at other people, all composed, if you will. It's it's these people. Saul's and his ilk were trying to fit in with modernist Rome. Simply typical behavior of the pseudo trad. And this this is you know this is where we're at. It's about books. It's about conferences. Goodness gracious. If you're two theologians or Saul's and Cisco, you are in big trouble. So I will let Father Kramer handle uh, more of the doctrinal uh, issues. We'll both get into that, the whole argument of a manifest heretic where Saul's and Cisco go wrong on the matter. Uh, again, look for that talk on the 26th to the 27th. But, you know, in the end, ladies and gentlemen... People have to sit, they have to pray, they have to continue to be, uh, pray for the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is, folks, is that the Neo-SSPX and people like Salza have caused the disruption from what Archbishop Lefebvre truly taught. And again, coming at it from the angle that Lefebvre and, you know, Father Hess and people like Father Kramer of the old guard, I kind of put it, were right. And obviously, Bishop Filet doesn't think that. Salza doesn't think that, because we have quotes proving that not only does he not know what Archbishop Lefebvre truly taught, as I caught him off guard in private email exchanges, 
that he's not he's not applying it. Listen to me, folks. We have a pope, in my opinion, it is due to Benedict uh, the sixteenth being run out. His resignation is invalid. He is the true pope. We have a pope over the church. I'm not a state of a contest. Do I think one day, based upon uh, his teachings, that he will be formally excommunicated like Honarius, like the other Vatican II popes? Yes. I do. We're dealing, we truly are, objectively speaking, dealing with a new religion here, being masked, if you will, under the guise of Catholicism, when in reality it is not. It's the Novus Ordo religion. There's no such thing as a Novus Ordo Catholic, folks. The Novus Ordo is another religion of the New World Order. Novus Ordo and Catholic don't go together like oil and water don't go together. So on the basis of knowing that we still do have structure, right? We still have cardinals, we still have bishops. Why can't you follow these people? Because they're not teaching the faith. That's what Archbishop Lefebvre said. Now what's happened? People like the Salza who are money motivated and trying to go out there and sell books and make a name for himself and trying to demonize people in the resistance trying to now you know get buddy buddy with all the conservative cardinals and all these other people who Archbishop Lefebvre deemed are poisoned therefore fundamentally speaking it still remains the same Archbishop Lefebvre the Father Hesses of the world and even put Father Kramer in there you know these these are the models to fly by not the new position of the society we are Catholic. I don't need Francis or Benedict the Sixteenth to tell me I'm Catholic when they are not. They're teaching heresy. They've departed from this faith, as Archbishop Lefebvre said. They've left the church, objectively speaking. Rome's modernist. What what don't these pseudo trads get? If there's not self-love there then why do you care why do you care whether you are recognized whether the modernist calls you catholic or not that's something for you all to decide again i've had my suspicions for a long time they've been confirmed by some people who are close even priests who have been close to a lot of these pseudo trads and so when i say it i don't hesitate in saying it Cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. A lot of them are hurting. And guess what? On the basis of them being deceptive and lying and trying to misproport as as uh, Salza tried to do recently with me, trying to put words in my mouth, things that I have never said, it's going to come back and bite them in the rear end, and it's showing up. People are leaving their websites. People are leaving these chapels. Quite, I don't think people realize how honestly how, how to what extent i've never had one person after one conversation that i've had trying to help people understand why they shouldn't be in a neo society chapel ever say they would go back again not one so ladies and gentlemen if you have uh questions again this you know from every from every now and again folks you know, I can't sit there and, and try to defend myself with every last, uh, you know, rumor or refutation. It's just, it's really silly uh, to have to sit here and re-say what I have to say. And again, even, I, I've said these things personally to Salza on the phone. Was he paint? what was he doing? Getting a manicure on his toenails? Was he not paying attention to what I was saying? No way did I say any of this stuff. So Mr. Salza, shut your mouth. Quit saying these stupid things. Because it makes you look really stupid. It makes you look really foolish. And I know you think that somehow you're going to come and people are going to recognize you as the next St. Thomas Aquinas. No, you are not. I don't know anyone that puts you into that category. Not a one. <laughs> so you can get off your high horse. Ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned, religion divides. It is sad. We can all agree on that, right? That this is truly uh, not only the, the, the worst crisis in the church, where we would argue uh, from the position of Lefebvre and 
Father has, that we are in the worst crisis that we've ever seen. So if you're trying to figure out what's going on, it can be very overwhelming. And that is why I'm willing to take time out of my day to talk to you for 20 or 30 minutes. Truly, I will. I typically do that on Fridays, but send me an email at apostleofmary at hotmail.com and we'll take time out. And we'll, we'll cover a lot of your a lot of your questions. So don't listen to these, these knuckleheads like Salza running his, his, his lawyer mouth off saying that we are separated from these uh, these buildings which aren't teaching the Catholic faith and you can't do that until formal there's a formal judgment of the church to tell you so. That's the most stupidest argument I've ever heard. And I'm just going to give you my personal testimony because you know I was probably at a certain point like you all are. Some of you may be listening and you're on the fence. You don't know which way to turn. And I kind of remember adopting that position very early on because I kind of got caught up with, in with these pseudo trads, you know, for maybe like a week or two. And I was trying to figure this thing out as to where to go, you know, how to properly apply some church principles and, and, and be. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to quote unquote leave the church. I'm still going to go to a traditional uh, Latin mass here locally in Ohio Valley. And I'll still be quote unquote in the church because, you know, they haven't formally been re- deposed of as a heretic yet, which is completely, it's just stupid. It's a stupid argument that Saul's and the rest of his ilks would say. And I sat there and I'm like, okay, Lord, guide me now. If this is where you want me to be, make it so clear to me. And at that point I was very firm. Like I, I knew the faith and I, I, I knew if I heard something that would be heresy, I, I would spot it immediately. And so, sure enough, in the sermon, this particular priest was just adopting Vatican II heresy on the on the Jews, and you know everything was coming out of his mouth, and just the 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 the, the alarms went off in my head. Just the Holy Ghost screaming, "What in the world are you doing here?" That's what we're talking about. The issue is not validity, ladies and gentlemen. The the issue is the conciliar church is material in schism, as Father has taught, and Archbishop Leb taught, and it's illicit. They are heretics. They will be condemned in the future. And we can say that because we go back to the St. Athanasius example. He didn't have jurisdiction over the church. His quote-unquote private judgment came to light. It came to fruition. They have the buildings. We have the faith. We can say that right now. We can prove it that they're not keeping the faith. Therefore, you stay out of those buildings. Don't get into this pseudo-trad notion. I'm leaving the church. I'm leaving the church. I'm I'm not going. I didn't get to Sunday. Uh, I didn't get to my Sunday obligation. Because the only thing I have is a Latin Mass. But the, Latin, the, the priest who's saying the Latin Mass... Is saying all these heresies, but I have to go. I can't leave the church. No, it's better for you to please Jesus by staying at home on Sunday and sanctifying the Sunday. If you can only get to Mass every few months, three months, think about the people in China who are persecuted. The church is essentially underground there. You think they go every month even? Not hardly. I have one lady on uh, Facebook who emails me seeming like, like every three to six months. She can hardly get to the sacraments, folks. She's not sitting. If the church doesn't provide you a proper mass and a priest who's keeping the faith, you're dispensed from the Sunday obligation, and that is to be interpreted as you stay home, you sanctify the Sunday, you read your breviary, you do 15, you know, decades, rosary. You obviously have to sanctify the Sunday. I'm not saying you just stay home, you don't do anything. That's what would please Jesus. Not following these knuckleheads like Saul's is saying they have not been formally removed. We need to go into these, you know, we need to go into these uh, buildings. We can't leave them. They haven't formally been declared heretic. This is just nonsense. It's it's stupidity. There's nowhere to be found in church history when we understand that we we know we're dealing with something alien to the faith. So separate in this case very much is not to be understood from our perspective as we don't recognize their authority and this is where all these you know the the remnant you know the remnants having this catholic identity conference come up they got diocesan people they just got a whole mixed bag of people who are not on the same page i mean what unity is that 
it's it's Dunkin Donut time it's a get together it's a feel good thing hey yeah we're all Catholic we're not compromising <laughs> give me a break money 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 folks I'm not interested in money I take your donations and I try to create a very strong social media team around me and a lot of people don't like it they don't like the position we're in so we're going to be further attacked and again don't look for spineless salsa to try to attack me he's, I don't believe he's going to use my name I don't believe he has that much of a backbone to do that uh, if he does we'll take a look at his rankings in a few weeks and we'll see him uh, begin to slip and slide even as the Neo SSPX is so enough for my epic rant, uh, rant today I apologize I haven't been doing radio shows as of late as you know been very very busy uh, I'm tr trying to work with this whole new Facebook uh, structure I've been getting more blogs out to you on a daily basis like 15 plus so it's probably been a week or so since I've done a radio show I can tell you this starting in September I've got you know like the first week to 10 days booked we've got some good guests we're gonna try to roll back into that uh, probably won't be every day but I'm going to make a concerted effort of, of, of doing that nearly every day um, you know, in the end, all I can tell you, for those who are highly confused, at the end of every night, just say a prayer to God and the Holy Ghost. Listen, Lord, I don't want to be a heretic. I don't want to be a compromiser. You can only make decisions based upon what your information is today. Maybe you don't know everything that Archbishop Lefebvre said or the Father has stood for. I highly recommend every person right now to get to my YouTube page who's listening to this. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. Click Father Hess and listen to all 50 to 100 talks, whatever it is. Just sit there for the next month and listen to him. And then go back and try to listen to the Remnant types, the Salsa types, the Cisco types, and you'll understand what I'm saying for those who just aren't, it's not processing. Operation Suicide. Can't compromise on the faith which the Neo Society has. They accept the council, they're off. They're done. You, that shouldn't be on your radar. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be on your radar as a place to be. Again, get to in each individual priest, see what they say ahead of time. Maybe there are on rare occasions some priests. I know I've got one person on my Facebook page who says, you know, their society priest is very much supporting Williamson, very much supporting the resistance. They don't, they're not going along with uh, Filet. I don't know if he's kind of like just hanging on to the lifeboat there, just waiting for the canonical recognition or whatever it is. Uh, if you can find those situations, you know, fine. You, you actually may find those situations still in the diocese, but they have to be rejecting Vatican II and the new Mass. There's no other way around it. We can't compromise uh, any further because if we have this mentality that that what Filet is doing, what's going to happen next? I mean, are they really going to accept everything that Mueller just recently said they would accept? Eventually they'll, they'll accept collegiality, religious lib, Ecumenism. I mean, he he said that publicly, and I don't doubt it, because they keep going off into pseudo trad lad. We've we've had Bishop Flay make some very non-Catholic statements recently on his interviews. He couldn't even he couldn't even properly regurgitate teaching on the Jews, the Catholic teaching on the Jews, and trying to paint people in the resistance as you know basically anti-Semites. No, it's not. That's not the reality. It's just the reality is he doesn't know what he's talking about, and he shouldn't be followed. He should be every much just you know the words going through out of his mouth in one ear out the other you pay him no mind you pay no mind to these compromisers um i wanted to make mention i thank you all who have been sending me uh letters here lately i do appreciate that again we need donations constant donations keep this ball rolling keep this moving forward People aren't going to like us. That's too bad. I don't care if Salsa doesn't like me. No one's afraid of Salsa. No one's afraid of Louis Vareccio. No one's afraid of all these other pseudo-trad apologists. We're going to keep pressing on. We're going to keep calling them out. And they're going to continue to see as Francis gets worse and worse, you're going to see more and more people drop out of these pseudo-trad, uh, you know, out of these pseudo-trad groups. And again, the, the numbers, objectively speaking, are there. To prove that comment so donations still need those ladies and gentlemen if you don't want to use the PayPal route be sure to uh, send me a message at apostlesmary at hotmail.com for cash check 
uh, money order donations. I actually prefer those uh, nowadays, if you don't mind. But you know, just just the letters that are coming in too. That you know, they're very uplifting. A lot of people are seeing what we've been saying all along here. And you know, in the end, we got to keep praying for people like uh, Mr. Salza, the Cisco's. People aren't people aren't buying their garbage. Listen, anyone can anyone can quote canon law and dogmas. Anyone can start citing with footnotes. If you're not going to properly uh, apply it as the church has, as the mind of the church has, there's no there's no example that he can give to suggest that we in the resistance are wrong. And he knows it. When I initially proved him wrong six months ago and showed it to him, he didn't he didn't have anything really you know really to say. They have left what Archbishop Lefebvre and the Father Hesses have said. In the end, what's the judge's verdict on true or false pope? Well, we know winter's coming up, so it sure makes uh, good for the fireplace. You can save it for the next bout of diarrhea. This is what it's good for. Ladies and gentlemen, continue to keep me in prayer. We will be under attack. We will continue to refute. We will continue to defend. We will continue to grow. It's not going to be the Sauls of the world or the Novus Ordo Watch or the Diamond Brothers that are going to slow down what God has ordained. We're going to keep moving forward. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, look for that talk next week with Father Kramer, probably the 26th or 27th. Stay safe and God bless. Ave Maria.